Hello everyone. So in this episode, we'll start talking about WebRTC peer-to-peer communication. And I figured out that when we start talking about the peer-to-peer communication, we'll be having so much back and forth going on between our client and our WebSocket. So I figured out that it's good I come up with this particular diagram that simplifies everything that is going on and will be going on in our application therefore it's very important if you are following this course you get to understand this diagram because it will simplify everything that is going on in our application and that will make it easy for you to implement peer-to-peer communication in webrtc so in this episode i'll just go through this diagram and then in the next episode we'll start to implement uh, some of the things that are going on in this particular diagram although we have already implemented some already to begin with we have a client one here and a client two here and what we have already implemented is that client one can make a call to client two and client two can see that notification of an incoming call so what happens is that Client 1 emits the call event to our socket server and this socket server is our signaling server. Our socket server emits the call notification event to our client 2 and client 2 can now see a notification on the UI. We implemented that and they have two options. They can either answer the call or they can hang up the call. If they happen to hang up the call, we basically stop everything. But if they happen to answer the call, uh, we will do something and this is where we start now uh, handling the peer-to-peer communication in WebRTC. And the thing that we will do is that we will create this peer and a peer basically will contain um, information about the call like the media, video and audio and then it will contain some signal information uh, whether the signal is on, whether it's off, whether there is an error. So that peer is very important in this case. So we create this peer 2. Okay. Once we create this peer 2, uh, we will emit an event to the server and that event will be this offer. We emit an offer to the server and that offer will contain what we call the SDP data. SDP data is the media data, video and audio and other data that might be necessary. So we emit the SDP data to the server. The server will emit that SDP data to this client one, okay? Once client one receives SDP data from this peer two, uh, we will know that this peer two answered the call. Like, remember we had made a call, they saw notification. Once we receive the data, we'll know that they have answered our call, they didn't hang up, okay? Once they, we receive and we know that they answered the call, what we will do? We will create now peer one okay we create peer one and we emit an event to our socket server and the event that we will emit is an answer to the offer so remember this emitted an offer then this will emit now an answer to that offer and what that answer will have is the sdp data for peer one okay and then web socket will emit the answer to this peer two. And once peer two receives the SDP data from peer one, we will complete that peer to peer connection. Okay. And once that peer to peer connection is complete, peer one will be able to directly share data with peer two. And that data is the video, the audio, and so on. So they'll be able to communicate through the video directly. And we have something else that is going on here. When creating a peer, we will also configure what we call stun server, or you can also configure a turn server. And these servers are actually already available for free. Google provides some and we'll configure them. I think even Amazon have some, but we'll make use of the Google ones. We will configure the stun server when creating a peer, and you could also configure a turn server. And what stand server does is it will decide uh, the best network path for the peer to peer communication to go on. And that network path in WebRTC is called an ICE candidate. So when learning WebRTC, you might come along ICE candidates. So we configure 
the stand server and the stand server will decide the best network paths for peer to peer communication to go on and with stand server data does not go through the stand server uh, what stand server does is only determine the best network path and then that network path will be between peer 1 and peer 2 and they can be able to communicate directly without going through the server and that is very very efficient but sometimes that might fail because of things like firewall if we have some firewall and the stand server is unable to identify the best uh, network path because it can't find some ip addresses and so on so we use turn server here as a fallback and a turn server will enable peer to peer communication but in this case the data must go through the turn server okay it will not be direct so peer one will send data to turn server turn server will send data to peer two then peer two can send data to turn server turn server can send data to peer one so turn server uh, will allow the two to communicate but the data must go through the server but with stand server uh, that determines only the best network path and then peer one can directly communicate with peer two so when we have that direct connection uh, that means that it's more efficient than the turn server turn server is just for a fallback but basically this is everything that will be going on in our application okay we make a call call notification gets here then once we answer the call we create a peer and emit an offer containing the sdp data to peer one peer, peer one will receive the sdp data for peer two and we will know that peer two answered our call and therefore we emit an answer in peer one we create peer one and we send an answer containing the sdp data for peer one to peer two in peer two we will complete that connection and then the two will start communicating okay very nice now the next episode we will see how we can create a peer and then later on we'll see how we can emit an offer so the next thing to do now is to see how we'll create a peer and emit an offer okay but basically this diagram uh, summarizes everything that is going on in our application and also summarizes the webrtc concept of peer to peer communication so if we proceed and things start uh, getting confusing and so on you can always come back to this diagram and then you'll see light so that is it for this video and if you are enjoying the course and you are enjoying my videos support my channel subscribe share and leave a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one